Okay, cool. So back. I'm playing some Max Payne. I've got to leave to go teach in like half an hour or so. So Max Payne's really the only game I fit in <laughs> this time. Um, it's also the reason I'm playing too much of uh, Kingdom or uh, Night King Arthur Night's Tale uh, lately because that game requires like about at least an hour and a half, two hours of free time uh, to actually do anything with it. So playing this when I have like you know half hour breaks so or not. So we just started Chapter Four, Part Two. So we should should be able to hopefully knock out this part at the very least before we have to go. Oh my God! Exactly what I expected this morning. <laughs> I'll affect a very large shootout. What do I do about that? Oh, okay. I just screwed myself. Oh my god. Uh... Okay. Careful to quick save there. I can't believe I got my stuck in a permanent. Definitely that quickly. <laughs> okay, hard saves every so often. So you have to stay behind the trail of explosions. In that case. Just because I'm like. When Chinello was burning to get me, the feeling was mutual. He was trying to put out my flames with gasoline. <laughs> okay, literally. Okay. And that's the ammo resupply checkpoint, so I think we're done with that. Mobsters have been guarding a real treasure. 
the way out of this disco inferno. <laughs> Accomplished. That's bread ammo, it's shotgun ammo, it's like painkiller. Okay, cool. These ingrams a bit more. Oh dear lord. I was expecting him to come up to the top there. Okay, let's try out the cold commando. Oh my lord, not like this. It's hard. I like it. Vlad had seen my smoke signals. The Mercedes was revving to go, almost drowning out the banshee well of the sirens. You coming? We'll drop you off at the Punchinello Manor. Sounds good to me. When this is over, look me up. I could use a professional like you. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I mean, Max has pretty much proven himself to be, like, the most dangerous hitman. Okay, Chapter 4 was super short, so I think we can do Chapter 5, too. The night groaned progress. with cold. The garden lights flickered nervously. In their light, the falling snow was dead white before the darkness ate it up. I had heard the stories. The trio were mad dogs. They'd have hung the heads of their enemies over the manor gates if the capo had only let them. Punchinello wanted pain. He'd see the pain. <laughs> the trick in my situation was that there was no trick. No matter what the movies tell you. No rules, no secret mantra, no road map. It wasn't about how smart or how good you were. It was chaos and luck. And anyone who thought different was a fool. All you could do was to hang on madly. As long and as hard as you could. Someone had graciously left the back door open for me and killed the guards. My money was on Mona. I knew the trio would be standing between me and Punchinello. I had read their rap sheets thick as phone books. No one would be walking out of here alive. And of course the numbing cold of the broken insane. night had followed me in. Upstairs, the trio tangoed down the manor halls to the silent rhythm of their murderous hearts. The blood of their victims rust on their lips. Vince Mugnano, Pilot Providence, a.k.a. Big Brother, and Joe Deadpan Salem. The pistol was a frozen lump in my hand, piercing the skin, gnawing me to the bone. God, that entire, I'm sorry, that entire, like, sequence there was so good. Like, in terms of description and just, like, setting the scene. I always really appreciate how, like, all of the Foley work and that stuff in here is, it's honestly very top tier, right? Because, you know, majority of the cutscenes here are delivered through comic book panels and whatnot. They could just have narration, and narration's great, but just the stuff like the steps in the snow and, you know, the rain, the car, and stuff like that. It's all just, you know, very... It completes the picture a lot more, and it's a little bit more effort than maybe I would expect to do. Especially, I don't know how much of a budget this game had, but it's pretty good. Hey, the Twin Towers! <laughs> So, I didn't even notice that. Um, at least I assume this is Twin Towers. I, I, I'd have to assume. Um, based on the setting. Okay, cool. But anyway, I just needed a little rant about that. But just the all the descriptions and just the... Oh, that part about, you know, like, to the rhythm of their <laughs> evil heartbeats and stuff like that. It was, and, you know, their victim's blood rusting and just... Yeah, all absolutely fantastic. I just really appreciate when the game actually gives the like comic book aspect a time, to, or and the comic book aspect itself is you know more of a noir novel or noir film level nar narration and that stuff, which is then translated into comic level, right? So you get these huge text bubbles and whatnot, and then it's being translated into a game. <laughs> Anyways, back to music volume up. I just had to say that was an absolutely fantastic scene setting. All right, and we have 20 minutes to try to complete this. All right. Hey! 
Wow. Okay, uh... This is fine, this is fine. Okay, you can fire just semi-auto pretty well. Damn. Just the unfortunate stray round. I feel like how the AI like retreats when it thinks it's in a dangerous situation. There we go. Hey, Matt. Breda, we got some Ingram ammo. Yeah, we're full. Might as well keep using Ingrams. I need to keep an eye out for the little boxes and that stuff. I've been ignoring those for the entire duration of the game. And they apparently have items. Okay. There's an ant on my arm. No, never mind. It's just my hair. I'm hallucinating. It's fine. It's fine. Pilot, he's here. It didn't take me long to run into the trio. Oh, dear lord. Okay, what am I staring at? Here. The word on Lisa Punchinello is that she was a bit of a witch. The tarot cards on the kitchen table fit the picture. They weren't my kind of cards, but I was willing to take a crack at the hand Mrs. Punchinello had dealt. The, tower the first card was the, the tower. Maybe that was supposed to be the manor. It got easy after that. The devil was the master of the house, and death was me coming for him. <laughs> Impromptu tarot reading for Max Payne. I like it. <laughs> Turn on the sink. Oh my god! I got dusted. Like, without a goddamn question, I got dusted. <laughs> Can we go this way? Nope. Okay. to reduce the firepower. Okay, so I think that's the way to go. One down, two to go. Okay, uh, note to self. Yeah, how- Oh my god! I'll talk after the dead. Okay. That went well. Something I really like, and I know it's like really kind of a one trick thing that the AI does, but you know, for how old the game is. Right, how many like of these actual table barriers and that stuff you actually will see the AI put up and that stuff. And right, it like makes sense of what you would do in this situation. <laughs> At least for guys who are a little bit not just the complete junkies. And also, they'll take up cheeky ass positions. Especially if they have a shotgun or something. Like, they'll just be like, you know, let's hide right by the door. That way I can just blow his goddamn brains out when he enters. And it works a decent amount of time, honestly. Okay. Like that! You have a man hiding behind the goddamn... My lord. Also, I like the I like the soundtrack for this area. Alright, let's get the bread out. Grenades are dicey. We got pills though. 
Yeah, I can see how this game would be absolutely miserable on the higher difficulties, though. Like, man. Oh, I just died. I live? Never mind. Unfortunately, there goes all my healing I got, but... Look at this guy, just sitting up here. <laughs> replacing a vase. Yeah, I do like the AI placements in this game. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. They, they're in areas that, like, I don't know. If I were, like, defending against the stage, I would sit in the goddamn most cheeky location I could to try to get the guy, because in reality, that's kind of all you need at the end of the day. Especially since there's, like, no armor or anything. You can get just a cheeky shot on a guy. Uh, that's pretty much wins you to conflict. So if you have one guy. Two down, one to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, we ain't doing so hot on health. That's pain. Do, 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 do. Don't stop at him! This will. This will stop anything. Take cover. Is he a rocket launcher or some shit? Oh my god, he does. I'm alive? Yeah, this is a goddamn M79. <laughs> okay, so the reason I did that is because a lot of explode. Okay, well, exact same location, situation I was. Anyways, a lot of these type of guns in real life are not in the round specifically, not the gun per se, but they have like a minimum arming distance or minimum arming time really is what it is. So that way that exact thing doesn't happen, right? And I was just, uh, you know, wondering if I could bludgeon it to death with the shell. Uh, either it's not incorporated in this game, because why would it be? Or uh, this specific model or these specific rounds don't have that. I don't know. I don't care about Vietnam era weaponry that much to know specifically if these rounds are capable of proximity views, and stuff like that. Dies to heat damage. Okay, let's pop two of these bad boys. There you go down. Hard save. Now let's try to use the grenade launcher. Oh! It was too late for her. Huh. That's not what I expected at all. You're a real angel, Max. I couldn't uh. tell whether it was Mona or her sister. The body was a mess. The sick bastard had really gotten a kick out of it. Seeing her lying there got me thinking about another woman's body on another bed. Got me thinking about a fallen cradle. So, for anyone who has not the best memory, that's the girl we met at the end of part one. Or her sister. Or it's a body triple. <laughs> ah, yes, the exact New England Max Payne, girl. talk to me. Alfred Woden, you've got company. An armed helicopter just landed on the manor grounds. Oh, dear lord. You must hurry. The more, the merrier. There we go. Uh, we're low on injury, man. Oh, it's bad. Punchinello's trio was done for. Holy shit. I actually just <laughs> dodged that. <laughs> Dodge it all. Uh, how are you doing, Commander Ammo? Outside my door. Hurry. He's coming for me. You gotta hurry. Please. I could hear Punchinello on the phone begging for help. 
He should have been saying his goodbyes. I think at this point, Max Payne's pretty much solidified himself as like. When Janela was a pushover, the, the moment I stepped into the, the room, he folded like a deuce before a royal flush. No, wait. I was just doing what I was told. I couldn't refuse. She's someone high up. Government, maybe. I don't know. He was trying to buy more sand for his hourglass. I wasn't selling any. That's a good line. <laughs> trying to buy more sand for his hourglass. For... Oh my god! No, I told him not to. Well, I was gonna kill him anyway, so that's fine. Anything special in here? Nope. Okay. Well, Max didn't get to kill him. Nope, I'm done. Drop it. Oh Don't my move. lord! I like the last station mark. Max Payne. This is the end of part two. I could tell when I was outgunned. It was time to take another beating. No, I got Hillary Clinton. The mystery, which was a real barracuda. Trouble on dagger heels, a smoking assault rifle in her hand, and an army of killer suits behind her. How sweet. I get to kill two birds with one stone. Sooner or later, it was going to catch up with you. Mr. Payne, it's time to show you the benefits of my brew. Be a good I'd boy right now. <laughs> You'd find that Lady Luck was really a hooker. Ah! You were fresh out of cash. <laughs> Why? Okay, we're on part three. Okay, finish part two. Part two is short. Gentlemen, we're done here. Take me to Cold Steel. She had just given me an OD of Valk here. I could feel green fire eating my brains. But why? They turned to steam. They did a fade on me. I'd never had a chance. The witch had got me just as sure as if she put a gun to my head and pulled the trigger. Like, why not? The shadows rushed me. Bruised mugshot faces hungry for revenge. They knew my weak spots and closed in for the kill. The floor turned into a vortex of green blood. I fell. That's nice artwork. Out of the flash of fallen angels. Alright, I'm gonna end this here. We can continue on Max's drug trip afterwards. Some other time. Uh cool little end to the chapter, right? Clean up the mob bosses and all that. Or not the chapter, wrong. also end of the chapter, end of the part. Why would she just overdose you on Valkyr instead of just shooting you dead to rights? Like, if it was to... There, there's no sense in it being a, like a more believable murder or a believable death if someone to investigate, right? Because you just got done killing an entire, like, compound, pretty much. It wouldn't be unexpected that if you know, to find the guy, the instigator's body, also ridden with bullet holes and that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, he had died during the thing and whatever, whatever. So, like, I feel like there's some ulterior motive or something going on, or it is kind of a, supposed to be a kind of fuck you, because, right, potentially she knows he's an undercover cop and whatnot, and this is also potentially the drug that the people were who, you know, jumped up and killed his family and that stuff were on, and it's kind of just supposed to be like a disrespect kill or something. I don't know. A bit weird. Or maybe it's plot contrivance. Contrivance. Who knows? Alright, we're gonna end this here.